Maria Dirina. Well, hello. Well, nice music. Hello. Um, it's nice to meet all of you, those who I haven't personally met yet. So I'm here to tell you about basically two things. About Russia and Russian market and the uh, digital technologies which are cool in Russia now and are widely used. And in the second part, we're going to talk about sequential marketing. What is that? Why do you use it? And most importantly, how you implement it. This session is going to be super practical. Um, I don't mind being interrupted. So if you have questions on the way, just ask them if you don't understand something. So feel free. I'm heading uh, the Swiss office of Yandex. And uh, my team is working with the top um, clients, top brands from Europe. So basically, the examples which you see here, the case studies, are their stories. Um, some of you probably know Yandex. How many actually know what Yandex is? Who Yandex is? Wow, that's a nice audience. Ooh, very cool. Thank you so much. So Yandex is the main search engine of Russia. It's a public company since quite a few years. The company is growing by 25, 23% every year for the past eight years. So those who, of you who don't know what Yandex is, do read about it. Um, those of you who have maybe been in Moscow, for example, know that when you live in Russia, you are basically surrounded by Yandex. You buy your tickets with us, your book, your um, theater visits through us, you look up the weather, you search, you order your food just like you order over Uber foods in the US. You listen to your music, you check the train schedules, all of that you do with Yandex. This is a just very brief overview of what we are doing. These are just a few examples of the apps that we have for our users. Um, you will notice here also the um, Kinopoisk, which is the uh, movie streaming service. Um, how many apps do you think we have in total? A wild guess. No, that would be too much. Oh, right, that would be nice. 40, 56 at the moment. So when I say that we're trying to surround the user, we're really trying our best to do that. Now, I'll tell you about three coolest apps before I move on to the practical part. Um, these are the three latest products of Yandex, which I like the most. I think they're the coolest. Yandex Drive. Um, not so many people know that actually Russia, and Moscow specifically, is one of the top cities in the world in terms of car sharing. Actually, if you look at the car sharing fleet itself, which number do you think in the world Moscow takes? It's a city number. 5, 10, 15? Is it in the top 5? Top 10? Top 3? It's number 2. Who do you think is number 1? Who is the most car sharing city of the world? Tokyo. Right? Tokyo. And number 3 goes to after Moscow? <laughs> I haven't noticed that, but maybe you're right. No, it's actually Beijing. So, uh, share driving in, uh, in Moscow, how does it work? You open your maps, Yandex maps, you see a car next to you, maybe three, three, I don't know, 30 meters away, 10 meters away. You get to, to you open it with your mobile phone. Once you sit in, basically the system recognizes automatically your Yandex music account and your Yandex maps account. So it loads, loads automatically, for example, your favorite places in maps to take you home or to take you to your mom or wherever else. And it automatically starts your Yandex music playlists, which you have saved. Then you drive, you get out of the car, you close it again with your phone, and then either your credit card or the Yandex money account is charged for the trip. That's it. So basically now, people in Moscow have the luxury of deciding whether they want to own a car, as a few speakers before said, that it's actually becoming less of a trend to buy a car, because if you live in a city which is packed with traffic, maybe it's not the wisest decision, because then you also have to pay all the road fees and the parking fees, etc. 
With Drive, you don't have to do anything. Petrol is included, parking is included. You can leave your car wherever you want to and just go. Yandex Taxi would be an alternative to Yandex Drive, so you can decide between the two. I know that you here, people in Riga already noticed Yandex Taxi. It is expanding quite massively in the past few years. It's now available in 15 countries, and the most recent developments were Estonia and Finland. But even more exciting is the idea of Yandex, and that's what some many people also don't know, that Russia, and Yandex specifically, is one of the leading manufacturers who is working on self-driving cars technologies. Now, our prototypes were successfully tested already quite many times, both in Moscow and Tel Aviv. Uh, but most importantly, they were tested and demoed at uh, CES this January in Vegas. That was a blast. I do encourage you to go to YouTube and watch some videos of how people feel when they're the first time driving in a car without driver. Because you see, I mean, it's one thing when you're in Tesla, for example, if you have experienced and it's just changing lanes for you, which is at first is already scary enough. But then when you sit in a car like this and you see the wheel turning by itself with no one in the seat in the front of you, and you know, you, you go on a pretty busy traffic junction and it just turns the car for you. I mean, the first 10 minutes you're like, oh my God. And you, see, you can see on YouTube the videos of all these people and emotions um, they have when they were taking uh, selfies doing that. That got quite a good coverage and that's what I was talking about Moscow being actually the second city in the world at the moment um, in terms of car sharing activity. Now, and the third um, technology of Yandex app which I'm going to talk about is um, Alisa. Alisa is our voice search assistant. Now, when we talk about voice, and at every conference I attend, we now speak about voice, but we still talk about it more in the sense that this is the future, we should find a way how to monetize it, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe we should start thinking about how we adapt our keyword lists to the voice search, but this is not future anymore. This is actually the reality which we're facing now. Look at this number. I mean, it is amazing. In Russia, 20% of search taking place through Yandex, and we have to remember that this is the main search engine, is taking place via voice. Especially in cars, when I was talking about drive, you get in the car, your map's automatically loaded, you don't push the buttons anymore, you actually talk to her, because this is way more convenient. So, Alisa is our blast. We didn't even expect ourselves that it will be so engaging for our users and that it will be such a success immediately. Um, it was such a, such a success that um, about a year ago, Google gave us an award for this. So, thank you, Google. That was really nice recognition. Um, these are the technologies which Yandex is doing now. But of course, one of the main parts of the business of Yandex is advertising. And the main purpose of our conversation here today is for me to show you what is now cool in advertising. What can you do using all the technologies which we have? Let's um, start from the beginning. So when you start your campaigns, how many of you have actually are working with the ads or doing digital marketing here, campaigning? Good, that's about half of the audience. So when you start your campaigns, when you're just entering market or you have a new product, what do you normally do? You start with uh, most probably the normal text ads. You start with search, um, and that is the basic of basics. Then probably you think, okay, I mean, we've been doing it for a couple of months now. We probably covered all our keyword lists. Let's do remarketing. Um, and this makes total sense because, as you see, this is Yandex data on top of the t advertisers, top accounts in each of these industry. You will see that for most of the key industries, majority of conversions come from a very small fraction of visits to the website. So it does totally does make sense to to run um, remarketing type of campaigns. 
then you probably think, okay, I'm doing very basic remarketing, I'm just targeting those who converted, or maybe also those who visited my site. But this is pretty basic, and then you say, okay, I'm gonna go for a bit more sophisticated options. Maybe I should also be promoting my app, maybe I'm gonna be um, targeting those who have started a transaction, put something in the cart, but never checked out, for example. But eventually, what you end up are these. So you, you take all these targetings, you, you do remarketing, you do the types of campaigns which you do. But even that, you probably know, is very often very difficult to implement because maybe you are the search team and you are doing the performance products. And the team who is doing the awareness and reach products, so who would do video for you, is, if you're lucky, they're on the another floor in your building. If you're a bit less lucky, they might be in another country, in the other division of your company, or they might actually outsource these type of campaigns to an agency. And it's not the agency which you use for your search campaigns or your brand campaigns, and then you know, you're in trouble because you, 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 you never talk to each other, you never connect. And eventually, all these remains linear. You know, there is no, not much interconnection. So you do, each of you, a separate bit of work, which together probably, hopefully, works for your brand. The beauty is that we all live in 2019, right? And we have the technologies to do things differently. I've highlighted for you the word gently here. And speakers before me refer to it that in 2019, you don't, you know, you don't forget um, the frequency cap settings. You don't leave the default one. So the user, all the user gets is the same banner, which he sees maybe six times during a week because he forgot to change the frequency settings. And that's it. This is the past. If it's not, it should become the, the past because the technologies which you have are much more fun. And you can allow yourself to do the sequential marketing, which I'm going to talk about now. Now, I had, I was thinking of an example to give you, and probably the best here was actually to give you an example from my own life, not, not one of the uh, customer stories. Um, I saw a video, have, you know Swatch watches, right? The Swiss ones. You, some of you probably know that they are now also doing um, Swatch Pay, which is a technology like Apple Pay for quickly paying with your watch. So I saw this video, I think it was, yeah, I don't remember where, somewhere I saw the video. And they have two types of ads, the same story, but one for a girl, another one for a boy. So obviously I saw the girlish one. So the girlish one goes like this, there are two guys at the bar, and there walks a very beautiful lady on her high heels to get her drink, and she wants to pay for her drink, and those two guys, they are trying their best to find their wallets and cash and everything, you know, to be the fastest one who pays for her drink, and obviously starts flirting with her. Now, wh while they're doing all these awkward movings, do watch this ad on YouTube, it's fantastic. So they're doing all that awkward stuff, she just extends her hand and pays for the drink, with her um, swatch pay and just walks away. That was the video. A few days later, I saw at the main station, like uh, this huge outdoor billboard, which had the message, and it was showing this uh, um, swatch pay watch in like light pink color, and the, uh, the message was, um, you can buy yourself a pink watch, not because you're a girl, but because it's cool. So the message, you know, saying that, you know, pink is not necessarily girlish color and, you know, you can just be cool. And then a few days later, I was just presented a normal ad copy where the message was the picture of the swatch pay watch and the message was, you seem to like it already. So here's a little push for you to get this cool watch. And there was a discount of 15 or 20% because it was also Women's Day or something. So, I mean, they split their message in a few bits. They made it appealing. They didn't blink to me as to a user. They just 
very gently surrounded me by their product. They showed me how cool I could be, and every girl wants to be cool, and they actually repeated the, wor the word itself, cool, in all the three channels. So after two weeks of seeing all that stuff, I started thinking about, you know, swatch pay, because, I mean, it looked attractive. It resonated in me, every message they were saying, because I'm a girl. For bo you want to know what the, uh, what the ad was for the boys? It was actually, there were two couples in a, in a hotel, I think, and they, they're about to have sex. And then in both couples, in both instances, they realized they did not have any protection left. So both men, they run downstairs to the vending machine um, to get the condoms. And they end up in front of this vending machine and there is only one package left. And so the other guy, he starts, you know, once again doing this awkward stuff, trying to find his wallet, his credit card, cash, something. And the other guy just extends his hand and pays with his watch pay in this vending machine. So I guess, I don't know, I, I guess it resonates in you guys. So that's what you can do now, and you should be now, you should be thinking, what is your story of your product? What are you trying to tell me? If you were talking about this product with your friends, how would you describe it in a lovely story? Break it into pieces and then think where your users are, where they could be seeing this. Because now you can do all of those, you can be super, super, super targeted and not waste your money, as um, Mario from Uber was saying, on you know just throwing out a huge awareness campaign there, spending lots of money. I mean, each of those would probably cost you something like 2K, 1K per month. This is different type of money we're talking about and very different type of efficiency we're talking about. Now, when I was telling you the, uh, the swatch story, you might wonder, I mean, when we go back to this, you probably realize how they found out that I'm a girl, that I'm interested in technology, so that's why I would probably like a pay watch, just judging from my search behavior or what I was you know, reading before, because maybe I read Wired magazine, so probably I'm into technologies. Okay, that's all clear. How could they possibly find out that I was standing there in front of that billboard with a pink watch and consciously observing it. Anyone knows? No? No? Anyone thinks it's possible, generally speaking? Please raise your hand who thinks it's possible. Yeah, the majority of audience is skeptical. It is possible. And that's what I'm going to talk about now. That's what makes the combination of all, of all the targetings plus all the technologies so exciting. When those of you who have ever been to in offline marketing before switching to digital marketing, you probably remember how you would do billboards and outdoor advertising before. You would pay an agency a lump sum of money for a month for a certain amount of impressions. What we do now at Yandex is that you pay for real impressions to start with. And what I mean by that, um, in order for you to see this billboard and what's there, you know, any kind of ad, you actually need to stay in this red triangle for a minimum amount of seconds to be able to consciously see it and read it. And that's what we in Yandex mean when we say real impressions. We don't count those, you know, which just blink. We actually count impressions shown to actual users who stayed in this right triangle for a certain number of seconds. Now, you'll probably get all the decks and you can look into the formulas of how exactly this is calculated, you know, the, the, the real numbers, the real impressions which you get out of um, digital, out of home. But the main message is here, that cars passing these, pedestrians passing all these can now be interconnected into your Normal search campaigns can be interconnected in your normal display campaigns, CPM campaigns, video campaigns. You can surround them by everything and you still, you still you see them as users. You still see the statistics on those guys who have passed your outdoor advertising 
and who these guys are. What are their gender? What are their short-term interests, long-term interests? What is their income category, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And I usually get the question if it exists indoor. Yes, it does. Indoor, it actually, it's even cooler technology. Yandex is in a partnership with one of the um, key producers of displays in this world. And they have this fantastic technology, which works already now. This is also not high tech. This is not rocket science. It works. So basically, the screen, the AI behind the screen, is able to detect who is standing in front of it. With 90 plus probability, if I remember correctly, it already detects if it's a woman or if it's a man. And now it's 80 plus probability that it detects the approximate age category. And there are five age categories of people standing in front of the screen. So what happens is that, and we have now advertisers already doing this, they are showing um, their ads in grocery stores and pharmacies. And the ads, which is displays, this depends on who is standing in front of the screen. If it's a woman, they show one thing. If it's a man, they show another thing. If it's a mix of people, two or three people standing in front of the screen, they're going to show a gender neutral ad. This is fantastic. I mean, it sounds like space technology, but it's not anymore. It's here already. And this, what I was talking about when you actually see all the data on people who saw your outdoor or indoor, indoor billboards. This is amazing. Before, you could build remarketing on those who visited your websites, you know, your first party data only, and, and see them and maybe segment them somehow and retarget. Now you can make use of this data and combine your perfect segmentation out of all, all, all these blocks. So how do you have fun? When I say combining all that stuff together, you remember this? So we are walking away from this already now into something which looks like this. When, when you think of a product, when you think of a market, when you think of a push that you want to make, you actually draw something like this, not a plan that we start with search, then maybe we're going to test for a bit of display. If we're super courageous and we have a fantastic creative team, which is also quick enough with producing creatives, we're going to do some video, maybe we're going to do some seasonal banners, some pushes. No, now you have an easy opportunity to connect everything together with one pixel only into one segment and say, hey, I want to target those who have seen my billboard, who have watched the video which I was showing her about the swatch pay at least for 85%. Yes, yeah, 75%. So she must be interested already, you know, if she almost finishes the video. And I'm going to show my ad to her because she's also meeting the criteria. She's a girl who has a long-term interest in high tech. She's a girl who has a short-term interest in buying smart devices for her home. So why not a smartwatch? She is a girl who qualifies for a certain income category. And then you find me. Hmm? That's much more fun um, in your job. I'm probably going to skip this for the sake of time. These are the case of um, one of the top advertisers doing exactly what I've shown on the screen right now. And these are the reach for every step of the campaign which they're doing. The main message is that the more types and platforms um, for your messages you engage, and now you can be super creative because Basically, the link exists between all the types of banners which you can do and videos and creatives and messages that you want to send. So all you need to do is sit down and think about who are the guys to whom you want to tell the story about your product. Because now you, you have a way to do that super nicely. And this is the new reality. You know, you don't do these things separate anymore. Maybe you're lucky and there is no mess in your company, and actually you get the data from your CRM, from the cash registers in the actual store. If you got hold on this, do combine it with the pixel of the push campaigns, which you were making promo pre-summer or something like that. Do combine it with your user behavior on the website. 
that is now all possible. And that makes you save your money and also find the people who really, really need your product or service, not just random people. How does it work? Uh, for those for you who don't know, very brief introduction. Um, cookie matching, um, we mentioned it today a um, couple of times, how does cookie matching work? W all of us have here probably at least two cookies. I suspect that these are people who are from digital. You probably have three or four cookies on you because it's one cookie per device. And so we, as a search engine, we match these together. So basically what the algorithm does, it recognizes that this mobile phone, this desktop, and this iPad is the same person. And then you get three times more data because maybe on your app, you're buying yourself Vans shoes. On your desktop, you're watching some movies or some, you play some games, you're a gamer. And on your desktop, you're planning your next trip during summer. Then you combine all these together and then you know about this anonymous user much more. You know their behavior. And that what makes all these combination of targetings possible. Um, that's illustrated here that basically if you take one billion cookies and um, out of those 700 will be crap because contrary to popular belief there are a lot of bots and robots online there. And then 300 of them will probably be a good quality cookies and then matched all together they will probably sum up to 60 million crypto IDs. Crypto is basically the AI algorithm behind Yandex search. And then, as I said, once you get um, the cookies from different sources, you can also enrich them. You can see where the person goes, what he's interested in. Maybe he's in some CRM already because he's a frequent buyer of certain brand, etc., etc. You match these together, and that's what makes cross-product and cross-device possible. Um, cross-device, I'll just quickly mention here, for those of you who don't know, in Moscow, cross-device is a must. Um, if, you're not do if you're doing running campaigns on Russia and you're do not doing mobile, it just switch on the alarm system, because in Moscow, um, mobile traffic, for some of the industries especially, is extremely high. Let's take, for example, retail, fashion, um, mass market brands, how much do you think, how much percent of traffic comes from mobile? 70, that's a good guess, exactly 70. If we are taking um, upper tire brands, fashion brands, high level ones like Moschino, Gucci, Burberry, etc., how much of that luxury sector you think is coming from mobile? Higher, lower than mass market? Almost everything, exactly, 92%. So mobile on, in Russia, that's everything. When Ben was just saying that in New York he's going down the underground and then he's losing connection, you don't get it in Moscow. In Moscow you go underground, however deep it is. You get Wi-Fi across all 180, uh, 187 stations of the Moscow metropolitan system. Wi-Fi is everywhere. In most of the places it's free. If it's not free, you pay something like six euro per month for unlimited internet package. So even that granny, who you saw was uh, amazed by Google Voice Search, even she in Russia would get um, unlimited internet on her mobile phone. So do do you know? Do you remember this? If you're entering the market, and so um, just to finish it up, since many speakers were talking about predictions for the future, I thought I would make some for you as well for the Russian market, but then I thought these are actually not predictions because these are used already as well. We talked about being everywhere in every channel for your user, but there are some things appearing which, which give us new connections with the user which never existed before, but they already now become a reality. That's a new touch point with your user which you should know about and should be aware. So this is the Yandex SERP search result page. This is one of our clients, Decathlon, 
This is their paid search. This is their organic. Here are the social media wiki. Here is the maps feed. And what you see here is the nice little button which, which says chat. So what you can do, pressing on that button, opens this window, which looks like this. And it basically, over there, steal and serve without going anywhere, without going to the advertiser's website, you get to chat with their customer support. This is fantastic. Imagine it on mobile. Instead of you know looking through your mobile, finding the links on their, um, on their website, which is not always super mobile friendly, you don't get anywhere. You just stay there and you chat and you ask questions. Etc. This is fantastic, and this is already also developing much quicker than we thought. You know the demand for it. Voice. This movie. Is, who, who has seen this movie? It's fantastic. Thank you. It, can you imagine? It's from 2013. That's so. That's just a couple of years ago. And how how much further away we already you know from where we were, and how much closer we are to the movie. We are especially very close with um, Alisa, our voice search, who I mentioned before. What makes Alisa different from other search as voice search assistants, um, like Siri and Cortana, um, is that she has a sense of humor. Now, voice search assistants usually work like this. The, the data behind voice search assistants is immense. Because for every answer a user asked, you need to get a certain answer, right? Question, answer, question, answer. It works like this. So Alisa is the only one which doesn't learn, actually, an answer to every question. She actually improvises. So what she does is that, even when we're speaking now, she's reading books. She is reading and she is studying through everything ever produced in humanity by humanity in a text form. She is studying everything she can possibly find online in Russian language, and that makes her creative. So, if we two ask Alisa the same question, she's going to give two different replies to both of us, because she knows something about me, and if you have Yandex account, she knows something about you. So she, maybe to me she's going to make a joke. Maybe she, to you, she's going to give some serious stuff immediately. But that's going to be customized. That's going to be a different answer for everyone. And that's what makes her a great conversationist. That's why people, when they get into Yandex Drive and they start, or they start in Yandex Taxi, they actually talk to her. Kids talk to her because she can tell jokes. She can tell stories. She can make up stories, which are nice, etc. She is fantastic. Do do try, do talk to her. Um, if you're a Russian speaker, I think you, you will fairly enjoy it. So voice search, what's next in voice search? This is also one of our um, uh, clients. They're already doing it now. So when we talk about voice search and optimizing for voice search, what does it mean? It actually means this, that in your apps, you will probably soon also have bots and it will become a total normality to have something which interacts uh, with your user in a dialogue. I actually like this one so much because I tried it myself. And uh, basically, she asked you, like, you ask her to open the, uh, um, the gate. And then she asks you, which gate? And you specify, like, the south one. And then she's like, yeah, the south one is opening. OK. The next day, you do exactly the same. On the third day, she, me being stupid, she actually got sick of me. And she said, over here, instead of which gate, she said, like, it is the third time you are forgetting to specify which gate to open. And then you feel like the guy from the movie. You're like, oh my god, oh my god, wow. This thing is getting really intelligent. So I do encourage you to try Alisa. Uh, if you have a chance, just like with other voice searches, she's integrated in our station. Um, we are moving beyond that. We are also doing partnerships with other producers in integrating Alisa in a bunch of other devices. Maps, I'll finish with that so the organizers don't kill me. Um, what is that? That is a super new thing. Um, so this screenshot was actually taken on a hot day last summer in Moscow. 
Azbuk of Kusa is one of the like premium tire groceries um, grocery stores chain in Moscow. The funny part is that the point over here, the pin on the map, which you can see of the store, <coughs> the store is not there. It doesn't exist in this point. So these pins on the map, they're actually not tied to actual physical location of the store. They are strategically placed. So you can see that actually this store is 20 meters walk from you or nine minutes drive if you are by car. So as Book of Kusa, the brand, they know that a place over here in Moscow, it's a strategically nice one. A, because it's damn confusing. So people who are walking on driving there are for sure looking into the maps. And point number two, the, uh, when you try to cross the street over here, the traffic light is extremely slow. So you always end up waiting for one minute and a half, sometimes two, while you're the, at traffic light. Now, if you're a modern human being and you're standing there for one minute and a half, what you start doing, you start browsing with your phone, you know, playing with your phone, or maybe you're just checking the maps that you're still on the road where you need to be. And that's where the thing appears, you know, and it catches you in the moment of you, you know, feeling damn hot in Moscow in August, and then they create basically a demand for this wonderful ice cream in you because you're standing there all confused about this traffic and say, hey, why not? I mean, it's a eight minute, nine minute tree route and I still need to buy some stuff for the evening and I can just walk there if I'm walking. So pretty much that's it. Um, if you do have questions, if you do have doubts about your current campaigns, please reach out, um, ask questions. I am myself, as you probably guessed, very creative about how advertisers should be doing their campaigns now. So do ask questions. I'll be happy to, to answer. Thank you.